Okay, gang, today we're bringing you something really different. We're heading to the fully charged electric vehicle show. That's right. We're, of course, we're more interested in the motorcycle side of things, and we um, actually got an invite from Zero Motorcycles, who's got a demo set up and some stunt shows. So it should be a good day, and we plan to answer the all-important question, are electric vehicles the future? We don't know, and I guess you don't know yet, but we're going to find out today, and we're going to have a look around. So come and enjoy it. A good day. We're going to take out Marcel, the marketing manager as well. He's my partner in crime. And um, I've already started fully charged. We we'll started the day with a Red Bull. And we're actually traveling in a hybrid vehicle. So yes, it is all electric today. So enjoy the show. And we'll give you all our rundown at the end of the day. Alrighty, here we go. Just arriving at the fully charged show. You're fully charged, Marcel? Always, mate, electrified. I was thinking about um, on the way to the fully charged show, I was thinking of your feature that you did last year on the MotoGP and yep. Phillip Island. Oh, yep, yep. And the feature, you titled the feature Roar of the Island. Yeah. Now, I just can't... I what, just, what would you I'm call it? I'm the, whiz, the, the whiz of the island? The whiz of the <laughs> island. I just can't imagine it. Like, the, the whole feeling and sensation you get when you're on Phillip Island and you just hear the bike screaming up the track. It's amazing. It's what makes the experience. Like I'm just wondering, what's that going to feel like when it's the opposite? Well, that's the different side of things. I mean, electric vehicles obviously are being brought in because they're going to be more economical and yep. all that sort of stuff. And you know, I mean, and fossil fuels and all that sort of stuff won't be around forever. And so, what, what gets me is that you can't then trans translate that to the racetrack. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. you've got guys coming up with all these speaker systems that are yeah. mounted to vehicles. And yeah, just to sound like a motorcycle. Just to sound like a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting. So, yeah, looking forward to the show. Yeah. Well, here we go, mate. Better line in. We'll go in and have a look, eh? Yep. All right, we're here, let's go. Doesn't that bike look like the bike from Dumb and Dumber? It does, mate. <laughs> Where'd you steal that back? <laughs> you know you can get 40 miles to the gallon on this hawk. <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> And then again, that'd be all right. You could actually fit a body in there, just put it in the boot. <laughs> Away you go. Is this electric? Yes. What about this? Yes. What about this? Solar powered. <laughs> what about this? Yes. What about this? Not sure. How's your sister? <laughs> what about them? I'm not sure. <laughs> They don't look very electric. What about all these people? <laughs> Are they electric? I'm not sure, mate. <laughs> what about this? Oh, where did we find Borat? <laughs> in a few minutes, our riders, Tom Ramage and Lukey Lukey coming out here. Lukey. Oh, Lukey Luke. Hello. Wait to see him ride, mate. While he's warming up, World Super Sport 300 and races to, uh, regularly in the Australian Super Sport Championship here. <laughs> Luke, all the professional stunt rider. Yeah, I've seen this bloke ride, man. Unbelievable. Not on an electric, though. That's different. The good thing about electric, though, the, the power was um, like this. It's instant. Yeah, so I suppose that'd be pretty good for stunt stuff, wouldn't it? It's kind of a short sport, but this one's running road tyres, which makes it a bit more like an overpowered motor. Oh, this would be slippery, too, eh? Tom is on our SRF. That's our top of the range sport bike. About 110 horsepower, but nearly 200 newton meters. So it's probably popping it into one of the. That's almost almost like a trial of course. I reckon. He's able to display what the bike's capable of. As he's also got all the tyres and brakes at the moment. Come on, DJ Ben, there's a bit more. Let's have some sound. 
Let's have some sound. See? Get it? The sound comes from the music. The sound comes from the music. <laughs> I mean, they look great. The bikes look good, yes. don't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. Pugs, what's On really interesting website, about all this is um, absolute you recently uh, reviewed the Kawasaki really Z900 RS. And from what I gather, and, uh, you did ride it really slowly. So the boys are having their In terms of the power, the performance is 98 newton oh, metres of torque. Oh, and did you hear just what the Tom just so said? He said it's 200. Yeah, right. Really. The comparison. So, yeah, and as you're saying, that power delivery is instant too. I mean, you know what I mean? The bike is very low in the chassis. How hard is it, Luke, to do this? For him, easy. Like you said, the weight's really low. If you still that, it's doing something like this, makes it a lot easier. I can hear Tom Rabbit grunting. Are you alright, mate? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm just. Oh, uh, yeah, I think the weight's really low and the throttle's really responsive, but actually, um, oh, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, did that, did that have a little wander? Yeah, there you go. Tom, Pugs, how are you, mate? Good, mate, yourself? Yeah, what do you reckon? Brilliant, yeah. I wish we had Ashfelt. Yeah. He's a bit that's kind of blown. Literally blew Bosch away, because in regular traction control, you're dropping spark and, and reducing fuel injectors. Yep. And that's a slow process compared to dropping amperage, which is so instantaneous that the traction control is super smooth. When we had our first ride day, we had guys who aren't that experienced at riding laying black trails out of the turns. Yeah, well. Because you can, it's yeah, yeah. that confidence inspiring twist yeah. of the wrist spins it up. So when people say, do you have any concerns about the brand? I go, you're going to do more tyres because you can. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing. So yeah, it's, it is, it's good fun. Good fun thing, absolutely. Mate, I've seen you ride heaps of times, so just tell me, what's it different doing a few stunts on an electric bike? Oh, no, there's no stunts yeah, happening. I, know, I keep saying to Tom, I'm retired, I'm not Johnny <laughs> Farnham, I'm not coming out of retirement. Yeah. No, but it does. It has um, very different characteristics yeah. to a motorcycle. The way I've explained it to my mates is it's not really a motorcycle. The yeah. similarities are two wheels, but the the feedback it gives you is very different. Yeah. You know, throttle, not not bad, not better or worse, just very different. Torque yeah. is through the roof. Yeah, yeah. You know, top end power, I mean, I haven't got it too top endy, but at the test track, it was pulling until I had to slow down. So, yeah, that's a good thing. You know, it's pretty pretty amazing. Because <laughs> all I've done is tested the live wire. That's what I'm really looking forward to yeah. testing these. Well, the connection to the throttle on these ones is actually very good. I, yeah, I yeah. tested some electric motorcycles in 2007, and um, I, I swore I wouldn't ever ride another electric motorcycle because it was a very on-off feeling. Yep. Um, obviously, you know, us motorcyclists, we're all connected yeah, yeah. to the bike via a throttle. Yep. And, um, and this is different. This yeah, gives awesome. you that kind of feedback, that yep. modulation. So I've got the throttle maps right. No, I'm looking forward to riding it, mate. Yeah, I think you'll like it. Well, have a good weekend, different. brother. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, Appreciate good on you. It. Thanks, mate. Go in the water, but zero. That's all they have. That's always all focused. Yeah. Yeah. And so look, that's... we had a guy talking to us about why the live wire wasn't a success. I think it's a success as a bike, yeah. maybe not commercially, because if you were to pick an audience who are least likely to embrace electric, then live wire was market. that audience. Whereas yep. we're coming at this as people who want to ride an electric bike will come to us already to ride there. this. Exactly. They're already yeah. there. And look, we already kind of know our market and that we've got guys, customers who legitimately know more about the bikes than we do. Yeah. They don't know more about riding them, yep. but they'll come in and reel off all the numbers and the regen figures because it is a bike for that tech market at the yes, moment yes. but over time it becomes more and more ubiquitous you know more as I said, we've yeah. had guys come out and have a ride who are like oh electric mm -hmm. yeah. no one gets off it and goes well that was yeah, disappointing yeah. you know nah. you know we even had some guys at heart where we did our test come over and he rides the guy normally rides a um africa twin oh, yeah. and he rode our dsxr the dsr the one, yeah. and he goes there's nothing to compare to i go you ride a um adventure twin uh, you know and he goes nowhere near that wow. nowhere near it and that's coming from someone that has ridden that one thing, yeah. but that thing's that's the one I, i'd love you to have a demo on yeah. 220 newton meters yeah wow that's <laughs> half a ford ranger yeah. in a motorbike. a motorbike it's more than a rocket three and there's no harley over 200 newton meters yeah, so yeah. that's where that bike oh, is wow. as an adventure bike yeah. so Amazing. Now that'd be awesome. Oh, munchies, time to get fully charged, eh? So is this cooked with with electricity? So it's, it's zapped. Zapped. It's over cooked. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, pretty competitive. Yeah, that's awesome. Competitive RRP with ice, with the bonus of being electric, yep. with the low costs and the low running costs and everything associated. So I think that's a great way to get in the market and potentially a lambs bike. Yes, yeah. I don't want to talk too far out of turn because we haven't even approached all the legals associated with it. But it's interesting and it, I think we may even cause some changes to the way lambs is looked at because we can fit in under a lot of kilowatt numbers yeah. while blowing the, the, the newton meters out of the water. Yeah, and we so probably should um, yeah. have a think about have how we want that. to approach yeah, that. Because, yeah, yeah. look, it's something people aren't used to. You know, you look at the, the SRX on our stand, you know, more torque than a Rocket 3, exactly double the torque of a CBR 1000, wow. but only um, 75 kilowatts. Yeah, far wow. out. So you're talking about, I mean, give us a quick rundown on how many models you've actually got. Um, okay, so there's three main lines. Yep. The three lines are our street range, the dual sport, and the FX or the fun range, what I call the fun range. Zero doesn't call it that, but we, we definitely, in mean, riding it, have called it that. Yep. So the street range ranges from our SRF, yep. which is the, the street fighter, the SRS being the, the fared one, the SR, which is just a detuned version of the SR, the SRF, and then the S, the 23 and the 24 models are quite different, but they're the ones that we'll look at from a land perspective. Right. So they're quite... I, won't, I don't want to use the term detune, but they're just lower power, lower numbers to make them more accessible. And the pricing's also pretty keen. Look, people who've ridden them, and you know some of our riders like Tom Bramich have said that you know they're pretty full on. So for someone coming into the market or someone getting off their first lambs, something like an SR would be a good choice. Perfect, yeah. Because they're still really quick off the line, as, yep. you, as you guys have seen. Yeah. And then we go into the dual sport. The main product is the DSRX, that's the sort of headline act. And that's a big step up for you guys, eh? that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and you know, 300 k's of city range, pretty great um, uh, highway range. That's the one that um, a guy's been riding around the world, the DSRX. Yeah, right. Um, there's a Black Forest edition for that, which is really just the same bike with boxes and ready set for touring. Then the DSR, that's the 23 model. The 24s look a bit similar to the, um, the one you see in the stand. Mm. And then again, like the, the street range, very lower power, lower, yep. smaller battery, keener pricing, and also probably easier for people to ride. Then the FX, we've got the FX, straight up FX, which is a, kind of a small dual sport, and you can throw some knobbies on that and go and really have some fun. And then the one you saw, Lukey Luke riding the FXE, which is just a mental motard for the city. Yeah, yeah like that to me would be a commuter, you know, 160k range in the city, not huge but plugs into regular 240 volt with a kettle jug. Plug. Oh, well. So yeah, get to work, that. plug it in at work, the boss can pay for that. <laughs> and, you know, to fill, even if you charge it at home, a full charge at playing full whack is under $2. Yeah, far out. For 150 k Can't, can't compete with Who that, cares, yeah, you know? Exactly. So, you know, we've got something for everyone. And um, I was gonna say, you've got a, a big um, segment of the market stitched up. There's a variety for everyone, someone, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's something that was really interesting to me when I came to the project was, that we're not niching, yep. we're actually, they're bringing in a broad range. The only thing we're strict on is this, this is an electric bike company and we're not a company that has dip, done ice bikes and dipping into yeah, electric. Yeah. We come to the market with an electric bike for electric consumers yeah. and I think that's an important distinction to make. We're gonna see lots of other brands come into the electric space and they'll probably all do a great job yeah. but they'll come from their perspective whereas when you talk to the guys from zero they live and breathe yeah. their electric bike and if someone's thinking of buying an electric motorcycle zero is probably the first at the forefront of their mind well you know there's not a lot of companies with more than 10 years experience no, in exactly. making them yeah. and you know you're not getting first gen bikes when you no. buy a zero you're getting something that's well developed two year warranty and five year on the battery yeah. you wow. know who's offering anything no. in motorcycling with five years and that's not five year Oh, the battery lasts five years. It's a five-year guarantee on the battery. Their feeling is 10 years and beyond for the battery. And that's their end of life numbers are like when it can only reach 80% yeah. of its original charge. Still a big number. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we think the second-hand market can actually do pretty well as well. Yeah. And we're going to support older zeros with service. Our service teams are really keen to get to dig in, Peter Stevens Group. But other dealers as they come on board, you know, we've got a really important way that we're going to support the bikes moving forward. The great thing about them is they're so self-diagnostic yeah. and, you know, all of the bigger ones already have 4G in them. We can over the air diagnose a lot of problems. When they come in for service, you know, it's a plug in and it'll spit out the problems. A lot of AI work. It's all future stuff. It's and really And that's exciting. the other important thing is the back end of, you know, like some manufacturers, you buy your bike, see you later, you Thanks ride out. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you guys have got that 
sort of um, service sort of thing set up, yeah, yeah ready to. Help. Yeah, and, and, and in terms of the way our models are structured, you know, if someone buys an S, one day we want them on an SRF, and they're not going to step up into a new model unless that bike they rode felt supported, you know, the product yep. quality was there, and all the things they needed out of that manufacturer exist because we want them to feel part of a community, yep. not just that they bought a bike. Yep. So for us, the support levels and the way we're going to do it is really, really important. Well, good on you, mate. I'm really looking forward to it, Tom. Cheers, folks. It's and, a pleasure um, to have you I can't wait to here. test some of the bikes, mate. Yeah, no, look, mate, I, yeah. I, I picked out a few. I think we'll start you on the DSRX, but, mate, by the time you're done, you're going to be a bigger expert than I am. <laughs> Sounds good. Good <laughs> on you, Tom. How you going? Nice to meet you. Good, thank you. We well, actually, I've seen you before, haven't I? I used yes, to. Yes, from Harley. Oh, well, there you go. Yep. So this is very different. Yes, yes, it is. This is our um, Australian designed C series wow. from Savage Motorcycles. So bottom line is, I mean, here at the All Electric Australia show, the big question is that everyone want to know: Is electric the future? I think it's definitely part of the future. Yep. You know, there are a lot of benefits to electric with the simplicity of the design, the instant power and acceleration, but electric won't be for everyone. So yep. I think it'll be a really fantastic part of the Australian ecosystem, but I don't think it'll be the be all and end all. So tell us more about this motorcycle. So this is our C-Series Alpha, zero to 100 in three and a half seconds. Oh, yeah with over 200 newton meters of torque. Um, it has a 16.2 kilowatt hour battery, which equates to about between 230 to 250 uh, kilometers combined city mm -hmm. highway riding yep. and between 150 to 180 on the highway. Uh, charge time, you can plug it into pretty much any 10 amp wall plug. Uh, and that'll charge overnight or between four to five hours on a level two charger. And it's got a bit of, fit, bit of carbon fibre here and there on it? And, yes, yeah. we've uh, designed this one with carbon fibre bodywork, which has been very popular. Yeah, it looks fantastic. So we've got oh, look at that. pillion seat and then yeah, we've got pillion pegs that just bolt in underneath yeah. and that comes standard. Oh, that's awesome. And what do they like to ride? Really smooth and balanced. So even though the battery does, it does weigh look, a little bit, yeah, it does yeah, look it's, it's pretty chunky. Um, daunting and overwhelming for, you know. When you sit on it, it does feel a lot smaller than it looks. Yep. Uh, but we've designed it so a lot of the heavier components sit underneath the battery. Right. Um, ASBK rider Jed Metcher has custom designed our suspension with us. Oh, so wow. our suspension is set up specifically for the weight and the balance of the bike. And we also have reverse, so you can go forward and back under power. So the only time you really feel the weight of the bike is just getting it off the kickstand. Right, and where are these available? So uh, we're taking pre-orders now. Yep. Uh, we've got 220 pre-orders already in the system. Brilliant. So about a year's worth of production yeah, busy, ready busy, to go. busy, busy, yeah. 100%. <laughs> uh, we start first customer deliveries from March, and we'll be starting test rides. So we'll be taking our demo fleet around the country. Uh, but yeah, you can jump onto our website, build your bike through the configurator, and for just $100, place your own order. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you. No worries, and it could be the future. Yes, indeed. Thanks Australian for that. future. That's it, thank you. <laughs> can you see here, right, Charge Fox, that's like a charging um, platform around Australia. And when I had the live wire, it actually was only in its infancy. So now that it's growing, it's getting better, but the problem with it, I mean, a lot of them are underneath um, like Woolworths and things like that. Like concrete car parks yeah. and that sort of thing. And, and it runs off an app. Yeah. So as soon as you lose any reception, you're standing up in a tree or you're trying to get reception because your bike goes on, off, charge, on, off. And that's, you know what I mean? But it is getting better and it is a good system. But I mean, of course, now Tesla have opened up the fact that you can use their charging yeah, system. Well, so yeah. that's where the whole world's changing. Yeah. And you have a lot of other third parties like yeah, Chargebox yeah. kind of just dropping their charges all over. Yeah. But like I said, they, they, they did it, so they haven't done a lot of thinking, you know what I mean? It's getting better, but yeah, just an interesting point, eh? <laughs> just charging, mate. Oh, what's wrong? Running out of steam, mate. Such a long day, man. They go all right, eh? I'm feeling all right. Feel a bit better? Yeah. Better than your Red Bull? 
Ready to roll, mate. Alright, let's do it. Fully charged. <laughs> so what do you reckon, pucks? Especially electric motorcycles. Well, I mean, it's contentious, isn't it? I mean, they're not going to be for everyone, but you know, it's been good to get here and sort of see, like you know, the, what's happening and how the whole electric sort of vehicle world's moving forward. And had a really positive day, to be honest. It was very uh, positive. How many people do you reckon were here? Plus or minus 5,000? Oh, yeah, about that, plus or minus. And I, I don't know, do you reckon some people when they turned up, do you reckon they would have been shocked? I think they would have been very shocked at what they mm. saw. Um, overall, though, I'm glad that they did it on Earth. Yes, yeah, because yeah. it, it was Earth, 100%, mate. Yeah. So there you go, there's the uh, All electric. electric Australia show. Yeah. Mr. Buddy.